Levi here from Best Motors Right Hand Scooter West.com. Today we're going to install this aero pipe. If you can even hear me. So here we have the aero Scooter West part number PMAR 08 muffler system. It's a complete system, includes a muffler, the header, complete bolt on system, even includes the spring tool. Pretty high quality pipe available on the Scooter West web store. And let me show you what tools are needed to install this wonderful pipe. Wonderful if you like noise, that is. This is a full unrestricted system. So just keep in mind if you're in areas where they do emissions testing or have regulations against using this kind of stuff, keep that in mind. This is highly illegal in the state of California. So here we got the header pipe. Replaces the stock header that normally has a catalytic converter. It has the provision for the O2 sensor, the smaller size O2 sensors found on the 2023 and later GTS 300 HPE2 as we like to call them here. You have a sticker and a pretty simplified installation manual. You have the muffler itself in black anodized aluminum finish with a nice matte finish carbon fiber tip. Um, for those of you that love a lot of noise, something I'm not a fan of, uh, the baffle is removable, just like the older Acropovic exhaust systems. And if you're wondering for my opinion on the aero exhaust systems, they are second best to Acropovic. Here at ScooterWest.com, I've evaluated a lot of different exhaust systems from Rizoma, other popular manufacturers. Uh, they don't meet the specifications that Alex and I uh, want for an aftermarket pipe. And pretty much, Acropovic has always met those specifications to making a very high quality, great fit and finish pipe that will actually last. And I would say second best would be the Aero system. So I'm happy to start carrying the Aero system that's specific for the 2023 and later Vespa GTS. And the last packet is some of the hardware needed to install the pipe along with springs, spacers, and more even comes with a spring puller. So in case you're holding out for the official Vespa aftermarket pipe, I won't hold your breath. It's gonna be a heavy, highly restricted pipe. If you're looking for noise and performance and a lightweight pipe, I think this is the way to go. Uh, we're gonna go over to the scales in the shipping department. I can tell you one thing, the stock exhaust is just wearing out my little skinny left hand arm. This one, I can lift it like a macho man. So we got the original Vespa 2023 exhaust system. It's pretty hefty. It's got a catalytic converter in the header. Also has a catalytic converter built in. Uh, let's put this on here. Of course, this is the ultimate in being friendly to the environment and quiet, reliable performance. It comes in at 15.5 pounds, which translates to about seven kilograms. So we got the aero pipe here. Uh, still got the baffle in there, got the header as well. Nice and light. Aluminum construction, stainless steel header, carbon fiber end cap. Put that on the scale, 7.35 pounds, which is about 3.3 kilograms. So pretty much half the weight. And I'll tell you about weight on a modern Vespa. Well, the muffler is sprung weight, so it affects the suspension quite a bit you're gonna have a better handling scooter, more than the performance, I would say. Of course, a lot of people buy the mufflers because they want the look and the sound, but I think you're gonna gain more in the performance and how the suspension on the rear of your Vespa works with an aftermarket pipe, especially a nice lightweight one. So for the tools, uh, 3 8 ratchet. Of course, you wanna have a whole mechanics uh, socket set. You got a 17 millimeter socket. I have a quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. I have a T40 Torx driver. You can use something like a T-handle or your 3 8 driver if you have the 3 8 adapter for your T40 Torx driver. Did have a combination wrench, 17 millimeter I used. Uh, you want some diagonal pliers to cut a zip tie. You're gonna need an extra zip tie when you install this pipe. And last, the Allen fasteners that attach this exhaust system are six millimeter. I recommend having a six millimeter 
uh, Allen to socket adapter. And of course, the torque wrench is always handy, especially with something that needs critical torques like the exhaust system. Uh, this is a, a lower torque, torque wrench, goes up about 25 foot-pounds. You don't need something as fancy as this, this digital one here. I've had this for well over 10 years. Still surviving, but you can find just a regular torque wrench um, that doesn't need any batteries that will do just as well and be within the accuracy needed for that. Of course, knives are always handy. So I assume everybody wants to know what it's like without the quiet baffle. Whoa. Uh, so I'll try that again. So everybody wants to know how it sounds without the quiet baffle. Well, you need a couple extra tools to remove the baffle from this exhaust. You're gonna need a hammer. You need a little chisel or even a flat blade scooter might do the trick. You need circlip pliers, kind of the larger size ones that close up that circlip. And sometimes to remove the exhaust tip, you may need some sort of pliers, whether it's a vice grip, something to pull it out of there. Included with the exhaust system is the spring tool and the anti-seize, so you're set there. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna show you how to install it and we'll go from there. So I got a T40 Torx driver on my hex right here, my 3 8 hex. And of course do it with a socket or any other way, but you'll need a T40 Torx. Of course, if I was just doing this in the workshop, I'd probably cheat and use some power tools, but remarkably, they're not torqued all that much. And typically, is what I'll do is loosen this almost all the way where it's just about the drop the exhaust. So almost all the way out. That's the top rearmost mount. Put your hand under the exhaust, lifted the pipe, and if there's another thread, was any there. And you just don't want it hanging from the header. Go ahead and just rock it until it comes right off the header. Sometimes it will want to pull the, the bushing And it's not the first time I've seen the graphite bushing kind of stay behind on the header there. So we went ahead and pulled the underseat bucket. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the O2 sensor. On this bypass hose right here is a zip tie for that sensor. Go ahead and cut that zip tie out of the way. And Right on top of the motor is where the connector is located. So from the back of the connector, you can actually push a little tab and that will release it. So right there, I'm pushing the button that disconnects your O2 sensor. And as you can see, the sensor is still on this little base right here. You reach in the back part of the connector and there's a tab you push up just like I did to disconnect the connector and then the connector just slides right off this little groove. So you can see that little tab right there where my finger is, that's what I'm pushing down and you press it and that's what releases it from that green tab. So a little bit of a trick to disconnect it but that's what you got to do. So we're going to go ahead and remove the stock header. I have a 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch drive with a pretty long extension. And just go ahead, go up through the frame. Scooter's on the center stand right now. And typically I like to remove the left side first and then you can move to the right side. And at this point, go ahead and remove the two copper coated nuts through 10 millimeter socket. And I'm kind of supporting the weight of the header itself. And now we can just pull the whole header out. So with your stock header, go ahead and put that in a vise. Get a 17 millimeter wrench. Usually there's not much that holds this in unless it's highly corroded into the header. Go ahead and unthread the O2 sensor. So we got the pack with all the hardware. Go ahead and open that. Got the spring hook, a sticker, several spacers, a spring, and a packet of Annie C's grease. Also the owner's manual, but I'm gonna show you how to do it without referring to the owner's manual. 
or service manual, whatever you call it. So. Three bolt spacers, so the, the Allen bolts thread right through those. You have two different spacers, the mount the muffler, the anti-seize, the spring that holds the header. Uh, the next step is we're going to go ahead and apply some of that anti-seize that's in this packet. Very small amount on the threads of the O2 sensor. We'll go ahead and thread that in there and tighten the O2 sensor. So go ahead and put the anti-seize on the threads, only a small amount. One thing about all these parts, they're stainless steel, and it's pretty critical that you do put the anti-seize on these parts. And go ahead and tighten the O2 sensor. If you're just using a wrench, you could probably get away without putting it in the vise. Just go ahead and tighten it fairly tight. It compresses that uh, brush washer right there. Um, if, the, oh, if you're installing this on a scooter with really high miles, it might be just a good idea to replace the O2 sensor at this point. Uh, the next step is we'll go ahead and fit the header. We'll kind of snake that uh, wire up the same way that was. So I'm going to go ahead and fit the header. I'm kind of, obviously the camera's not going to capture this. So you go ahead and push the flange up onto the two studs. And just by hand, it's kind of a tight quarters here. Go ahead and start the two copper coated nuts, the original parts that came off when you remove the stock header. So at this point, just take your extension with the 10 millimeter rent, the 10 millimeter socket. And the idea is you just want these seated. I'm going between the two left and the right exhaust nut. And right now it just kind of rotates like that. And we'll just leave it, leave it that. We'll come back to the O2 sensor at the end. So we'll start with the simplest bolt, the bolt that doesn't do much at all. So the short one, go ahead and put a little anti-seize on it. Take one of these cone-shaped spacers, thread the bolt on. And right here next to your dipstick, go ahead and thread that bolt right in. We don't even have the muffler installed, but they do include a screw to fill the spot that is empty. And if you're really a nerd, you can even torque this to about 15.9 foot pounds. All right, now things are gonna get pretty serious here. We're gonna take some anti-seize, just give it a small coat. You don't need much, just around this, this bell of the header pipe. Uh, go ahead and coat the pair of remaining bolts. And that's all you need to do with the anti-seize packet that's included with the aero exhaust. So start with clean hands. I don't typically like to touch the exhaust when I'm installing it for the first time. Uh, don't want any of the grease to, uh, to uh, dry. And I'm just rocking it onto that header. And as you can see, the angle's incorrect right here. But with the anti-seize, it all rotates around. Um, everything can be repositioned. I'm not gonna put this, the spring in. We're going to locate the large spacer, put the cone on the longer bolt, and put the large spacer up at the top. So go ahead and start this. They got a nice oval dot hole that kind of gives you some adjustability. And just leave it loose at this point. Go to the medium length bolt, put the medium length spacer in there on the bottom position. You may need to, to lift the exhaust system up just ever so slightly. And at this point, I'm just gonna thread this in by hand with a six millimeter Allen. And you can see it's kind of rotating the pipe just ever so slightly. So I just pretty much stopped right here, hand tight. Just back it off a little bit. Everything still moves just ever so slightly. Uh, next, we're gonna take the spring if I want to wear eye protection, you could use the included spring puller. I hooked on the front of the exhaust and then make sure the scooter's clamped down and just go ahead and pull the spring onto the hook on the header. And it takes quite a bit of force to actually move the scooter ever so slightly towards the front. So now that those are uh, seated, we're going to go back to our 10 millimeter socket if you want to get a torque wrench out, 
about 10 to 11 foot pounds is all you need on these header bolts. Uh, the nuts on these headers, they're pretty small. They're seven millimeter. I'm going to pretty much work between the left and the right, just giving them a couple little singes. And if you're wondering what 11 foot pounds feels like, it's kind of just a tight twist of the wrist with this size wrench. Uh, one other tip that helps is if you have a wobble on the, the socket. Sometimes you want to put a wobble on it uh, since you don't get a straight shot, especially on that right header stud right there. So I have those two tight and we'll go back to our torque wrench and kind of just make sure everything's where it needs to be. And we'll go to about 15 foot pounds. You can go as high as about 16. And you're done. Nope, one more step. We gotta hook up that O2 sensor. So go ahead and locate the connection from the O2 sensor. We can go ahead and kind of key it right to that green tab right down here. May take two hands. This is underneath that fuel line that's right above the connection. Pretty critical that you about it. There, it made a little click. It's now snapped to the green holder right there and then find the connection from the wiring harness and listen for the click. So I have the tab at the top. Nice little click. It's snapped in place. Now you have the slack of this wire right here. Want to feed a zip tie around that coolant bypass hose. Comes off the cylinder head. And sometimes this can be a little bit of a trick trying to get the, the zip tie around the head. Yeah, better luck maybe going from the top. And finding the tail of that zip tie. Almost there. And just go ahead and feed the zip tie through. You can take your diagonal cutters and cut the tail of the zip tie when you're done. And that's pretty much all you have to do from underneath the seat here. So now that the pipe's installed, before you even want to run it, you want to degrease it. Usually I use something like brake parts cleaner on a clean rag. And just get any of those filthy fingerprints off the muffler and the header. And the idea behind this is you won't, you'll end up with, um, the header is going to discolor anyways, but you'll end up with a nice even discoloration of the header. And when the, the pipe heats up, it's not going to leave any little marks. So that's typically what I do after I install exhaust. So here's a first start. So I have the baffle in. That comes factory with the baffle. Let's see how loud this is. So it's got a cold motor. Definitely much louder than a stock pipe. Give it a couple little revs. So you can get a couple little backfires sometimes on deceleration, especially when the ASR system is on. So definitely a much louder exhaust system when compared to the acrophobic or the stock exhaust. So the next thing, we're gonna remove the baffle. If you're looking for loud, I'm gonna show you what loud's all about. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the baffle. You wanna use something like a little chisel tip punch or chisel here. I'm gonna get that little chisel and then take a hammer and give it a couple taps and you're gonna be able to get this little tab out. It just has a tiny spot weld and that's what holds the circlip in. So the next step to remove the baffle is just like this with a nice set of circlip pliers. Carefully remove that circlip. And I'll warn you, if you're gonna remove this baffle after it's been heat cycled several times, it may be very difficult to remove. You may need a slide hammer to pull it out. But since this is brand new, it pulled right out, no problem. So that's the baffle. I got a smoking gun right here, which is pretty cool. All right, no baffle. Let's see what, what it sounds like. Definitely a much deeper note to it. I'm struggling to talk over the idle. That's how loud it is. Let's give it a couple reps. Now that's a 
nice and loud. It's kind of ear piercing to me. So maybe that's what you want. The hero delivers. So you see the smoke exiting the pipe. Don't be alarmed with the brand new exhaust. Sometimes you have even 50 miles of operation until it burns the packing and wadding. Uh, have residue and oils on the inside of the pipe. So you get this uh, kind of smoking gun look. To me, it's pretty cool, um, but of course, eventually it would go away. Uh, one thing without a baffle, you'll probably end up seeing backfires coming out the pipe when you deaccelerate. Uh, these scooters do run rather lean when you're off throttle, uh, especially going down a hill with the throttle dropped at higher RPM. So don't be alarmed if you hear backfires. Uh, pretty normal for a um, having an aftermarket pipe on a very modern scooter that has modern fuel management system. Um, a lot of people kind of like that. You know, cars they got the crackle maps. Of course, it's kind of a nuisance uh, when it comes to noise. So you know, just be cautious. Don't want to be going through your own neighborhood pissing off your neighbors, or maybe you do. Um, but that's on you. I'll see you on the next one. This is Robot here for Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. I hope you like that one, the Aero Pipe for the 2023 and later Vespa GTS. A little side note, uh, for Europe, they've had the Euro 5 engine, which is found in the 2023 Vespa GTS. So this pipe will actually fit the European models of the GTS 300 starting around 2020 or 2021. So they've had this style for several years. Side note number two. So a lot of people ask if you want to remap the engine. This is a completely stock scooter otherwise, other than the pipe. The O2 sensor does a pretty good job adjusting the map to an aftermarket pipe on these scooters. Haven't found much need to put like a tuner unless you're doing something pretty serious like engine changes, you know, like cam, camshaft, a cylinder kit, uh, reporting the head, doing some wild stuff. So they tend to work pretty good, but there's one thing you do want to turn off. I would recommend turning off the traction control system every time you ride. Keep in mind the traction control system's there as a safety feature. So maybe it's raining, you're on a cobblestone road or somewhere where it's a slippery situation where you want that traction control system to help you out. But they tend to just run kind of awful with the traction control system on with an aftermarket pipe. So every time you start, start the scooter, hit that little button, ASR off, turn it off. Um, that's how you can get the maximum performance with an aftermarket bolt-on exhaust system on a GTS. So that's it. See you on the next one.